Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Leon LeGray podcast. Now we are in episode 158 of the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. So uh, before we get into sponsorships, and uh, I wanted to let everybody know about this, that I have a huge or a big announcement just to make that my podcast is going to be on video and I'm going to be bringing it out on video. So I'm going to be doing this podcast live again. And this time I'm going to have it streamed on uh, Twitch this time and bring my podcast out there. So this is one thing I've uh, wanted to do for some time. And I figured I wanted to bring this out there too. So if you prefer watching me live or if you want to ask any questions, you guys may do so. In fact, once I am done recording, I'll have all the recordings straight through on and up on YouTube and on Odyssey. If you choose to wish so and if you don't have time to watch me live, you guys most certainly can watch me through YouTube and Odyssey. So starting next week, I'll have my channel up live every single week. So that being said, I will have that up live for you guys. If you wish to watch me cover the stories live on air as well. So that's something I wanted to do. And also, I know there are people that prefer watching podcasts uh, over audio as well. So that was one of the reasons that sort of influenced me to do a video. I pretty much shied away on it because I'm not real comfortable doing it on uh, live. And when you're on doing uh, stories on live segment, it's pretty you're pretty much have to do this on the spot. But however, since I feel much much comfortable going through this uh, podcast live, and I've been doing uh, streaming live for. Uh, for video games up on Twitch, streaming video games for uh, about once about once a week. And then now it's been, I've been streaming for now a couple weeks now, which to me, I'm, I feel very confident. I feel very, very, very comfortable on putting myself out there now since I figured, you know what, there's a lot of people that wants to watch me live. So, and I figured, let me just do that and pretty much spread my podcasts out there because I know there's a lot of people that prefer watching live for tons of reasons and and I, that's fine you know I figured let me just get myself out there because I know there's a lot of content creators that put themselves out there and said uh, and one of them said to me you know what um, I love watching podcasts I prefer to watch podcasts over audio and so you know what I figured I might as well uh, uh, broaden my horizons a bit and go on video and that's what I would love to do and, f- and I figured heck why not let me just go ahead and uh, put myself on video which is which is fine by me so either way I will have that um, video content creation up by next week so that will be perfect from that that point on too I know beforehand I wasn't really comfortable on doing live stories and now, since I'm much more confident on going and talking about my uh, topics live on uh, uh, live on Twitch, and that's for me, I figured, let me just do this too. To me, I rarely do any editing, and I would just love to just go ahead and just put it out live there too. So there would be very, very little editing through live content, Mo- mostly if I have to transfer content through uh, my PC, through Mac, that's what I'll, I'll do for sure. Even though my content will uh, will remain audio as well, but however, if I ever receive any good um, um, comments or feedbacks on the podcast through uh, video coming from YouTube or Odyssey, you know, any anytime I have it uploaded, then you know I'll still continue that uh, format. So I'm gonna give it a try, see where this goes from here too. So starting on next week by Monday, I'll, I'll work on new stories uh, by then and go just go from here pretty much. 
So that's pretty much my announcement for uh, what I have to say about video streaming my podcast and then having my recording up next day on the following day from that point. So before we begin on our main stories, let's get right on to, um, to the sponsorships that we have for today. So today's sponsorship, as always, is Scooch Case. If you've not heard of Scooch Case, I love the case. I love the design on it too. It is an amazing uh, uh, cover case for your phone. It's um, designed really well. It's a hard plastic. You can even uh, get a Scooch Case from a design of your choice. And they have tons of designs for uh, iPhones and, and different types of Android devices, special with manufacturers like LG, Samsung, and much, much more as well, too. And Scooch uh, Case is an amazing brand. They've been around for uh, for a couple years now, and I enjoy the product as well. They contacted me. I got my Scooch Case from them, and Scooch is a great, great uh, investment. So if you're looking for a case for your own, it is not as expensive as the OtterBox. To me, I think OtterBox is ridiculously expensive. It's just a oh, terrible, terrible an expense right there too. But right there, I definitely enjoy the Scooch, and you guys should check it out. Next on the list is Zenny's. If you uh, don't want to work on your uh, on your uh, computer for a long, long time, Zenny's is the right place uh, to block any blue lights. It's uh, a website that I've used a lot. In fact, I have Zenny's with my um, sunglasses. It blocks uh, anti-blue lights, which is super amazing. Whether you're working, gaming, or whatever you're doing, it is an amazing, amazing blue light glasses. Uh, so go ahead and check out these anti-blue light glasses from Zenny's. I'll have the um, the description down below. And as far as I'm aware... You guys should really check it out if you're working long hours on your computer screen. That's something I definitely, definitely recommend. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and begin the show. All of my sponsorships are going to be down below on the show notes. So check them out. And by the way, I I uh, want to let you guys know that check up on ExpressVPN. Please, please, please check up ExpressVPN. You will not regret it. Good VPN service. I've used it. Uh, at one point, and I love it as well too. If you use the custom link down below, that uh, that way you're protecting your privacy, and you will be helping yourself out as well too. So with that said, let's get right down to the main show of today. So it's going to be a, a doozy right here. So I hope you guys enjoy it too. Please let me know your feedback. On today's show on the Leon Legree podcast. I want to go ahead and cover up a few topics, which was been talked about since last week. And last week, it was about podcast descriptions and what I feel about podcast descriptions. So um, podcast uh, platforms such as Apple and Spotify, just to name those two right off the bat. And how would I feel about having my listeners pay for subscriptions? And... There's a point of me, and for me right here, I don't have a big audience. And so to me right there, I don't see the point of signing up for audio podcasts. And to me, I prefer uh, just giving my uh, an option for people to listen to audio uh, freely without having to charge customers extra. Now, if it comes to con- extra content that... I make on the side and let's say if I grow probably I'll probably consider it though though I don't know if I want to give up my works and to Apple like that too because at the same time here um I don't know who's going to pay for extra just to listen to a podcast and I've always known podcasts of uh, being like a free form radio for off pretty much it's like radio but for all offline listening and to me i just don't feel very comfortable if having to let other, others um pay extra for podcasting and i not that uh it's um 
something that to me I'm kind of get this is where I I have my side on on podcasting um pay, for paid podcasting for one um it's not going to benefit small podcasters like me and and to a side right here it's you're not going to make money really so to me it's just not worth it at the moment it's just not cuz to me I like to give my content out without having my listeners just to pay extra though if you guys are into extra content I wouldn't mind doing it but I just feel that all I'm doing putting my uh, podcast in subscription mode is probably just well um just um well I there is nothing wrong of paid subscriptions I mean there are music subscriptions for music on uh, that sense but for podcast subscription I mean there has to be a, a benefit uh why you would want to do it now unless if you're trying to put paid podcast subscriptions for supporting uh, a podcaster that's one thing right there too and um and now if let's say pod for anything like um for instance like i know that um there has if there has to be a, a way and to benefit uh the listener in order for me or for me to make content uh that they want me to make right and and i'd love to I, if i were to do uh pod just podcast subscriptions there has to be an incentive of why i want the listener to uh to pay for my content and probably if there was like a tier system probably so and what kind of subjects i want to talk about that's one thing i would do if i were to enable uh uh paid podcast subscriptions again i don't think i have a big big enough audience to incentivize myself to do it and to me that's just not worth it it's not really really worth it at this point it's just like uh why and 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 I'm sure there are many people who kind of look differently about it too. Uh but again, you're giving your work to uh to Apple and Spotify. And plus, if you're going to have paid subscriptions through these uh um providers or these platforms, uh, of course you got to look and read through the terms of service of how come you're going to give your work out like that too. Again, there's uh, plenty of reasons why uh, plenty of plenty of reasons why anyone would do it, but if you are a podcaster like myself, or going to become a podcaster, I mean, this wasn't like that like twelve years ago, right, or fifteen years ago, uh, with podcasting. I mean, the whole paid subscription is fairly new, and for a lot of people, I think um, they're trying to do that so that way they can give an incentive for creators, and I think a lot of podcasters are having a hard time with the ad portion of it too. So that's one of the reasons why. And at least it makes it easier for podcasters. And I do believe that podcasts, a lot of podcasters should be uh, paid for all the hard work that they do, the recording that they do each week, all all that stuff. I don't think there's nothing, nothing wrong about that too. Now, again, I haven't dig deep enough about podcast descriptions that well. I've heard that some people are are down to doing it and others are not because uh you're definitely have you're definitely putting your work out there for for apple and plus if you are a wordy content creator let's just say and a, for instance like a joe rogan a joe uh joe rogan experience uh now if you want to listen to him you have to pay like a spotify premium in order to listen to joe rogan on spotify and so that's where it all comes down to too if you want to listen you have to pay for his uh content and it's not like on youtube uh that on youtube you would have to go ahead and uh and watch go to his channel and watch it and there's no cost on that too but however monetization on youtube is not what it used to before like five or uh seven years ago uh, where it was it was a completely different, different world back then too, where any creator were are able to monetize their work on YouTube 
and now it's become fairly difficult with the apocalypse, so on and so forth. And that's where I find I think um, this may be beneficial uh, to uh, to those who are podcasting. And I know that if you are starting as a YouTube creator, there are some uh, benefits if you want to monetize. But again, you have to work your ass up on YouTube. Um, and again, there are YouTube has been very, very shady. And I just don't know how it would feel of putting my own content. But again, do I put my audio content up on YouTube? Yeah, I do. But again, I don't get paid to uh, get paid by Google for posting stuff like that, too. I mean, I used to get paid on YouTube for very, like, very much, very little minor things, right, up on my on my videos from my past videos. But uh, now the rules have changed on YouTube. And so now that's why podcasters like Joe Rogan decided to go through uh, Spotify. I think Spotify, he pretty much shook hands with Spotify on that, too. And to me, that's one thing as well. I don't want to go and give my my works away too, because by the time you sign in a contract or sign it with someone, you know, right, you're locked in for uh, for good. So that's something you have to think about while you're doing or putting yourself out there or putting your podcast out there. So that's one reason why I'm not gonna release my podcast or sign a contract with Apple. Or Spotify for those reasons. Even if it was like someone like Google, I wouldn't even take it. I would not, and uh, they would have to give me a valid reason why. Plus, I like to have my podcasts on pretty much on every channel. Put post my RSS feed on each uh, platform distribution and have my podcast listened everywhere else, especially like on platforms like Pandora or iHeartRadio. To me, I like to give more and more choices to people that want to listen to me so but that said here what are your takes on podcasting love to know from here on too so right now we're going to get onto a different topic which is um digital health passports which i know that that is a controversial topic i've been hearing for some time something i want to get over right now and so the uh, topic which vaccine passports has been a very growing uh, thing right now for now several weeks. You know, the first time I've heard about vaccine passport was last year. And, you know, a lot of people would dismiss this as a conspiracy theory, right? And how much, how bad this was going to be. And, and everything like that too. And then a lot of people shove this as a one big conspiracy theory and to me if i said if this was true this will be very terrible (laughs) very very terrible for people to um for one uh id vaccination i digital uh vaccination ids would not work it just won't because the fact that there's a lot of um um medical information that'll be exposed to people and why would it, anyone want to take the mark of the beast? And why would I ever, ever go ahead and put, um, take the fucking jab when it's not really tested or regulated? And proven, uh, proven on this as well is that this is not a jab that is pretty much has been uh, FDA uh, passed. And to me, if this is not about vaccine hesitation. In fact, for me, I've talked this with uh, two other people in real life. They've taken it because well, one one got has gone sick because of a daycare employment, and the other one it was is a a uh, an older man that I know, and I respect both of their decisions for doing what they're doing. They're still fine. Um, for me, however, it is very. Uh, much not tested on, on uh, FDA tested. Um, in fact, there's people that has gone sick with uh the vaccine, or, in fact, they've pretty much been paralyzed. Uh, uh, right from the waist side down. So that's one thing. It's 
I see is very, very experimental. And that's where I think it's something it is not even safe. And why am I going to be convinced or have these so-called professional tell me that it is safe? But I do want to get into the topic on digital vaccine ID. And, uh, and this is going to be a hard one, a doozy. So um, this is going to be a warning. So there will be some languages. So I want to uh, warn you in advance that this is going to be very opinionated. And how I see it is going to be very strong language uh, coming up right now. So vaccine passports pretty much has been talked about in several news outlets. And for one, um, if you want to travel, you have to take the take the jab. And then also, if you want to travel, you have to go and have the digital vaccine ID. And in fact, WebMD, what this um, publication that talks about this, which says here, a vaccine passport is proof that you've tested negative for before or been protected against certain infections. It can be digital, like a phone app, or physical, such as a small paper card. You can carry it with you and show, uh, show it if required, like before. You go into the office board, an airplane, or visit a restaurant, movie theater, or gym. So that right there, there is a lot of wrong about the vaccine IDs or the vaccine passports, which something needs to be said. And for me, however, I've I have don't even know any closest friends I know that passed away on the on the coronavirus right there too. And I'm sure there are people that will say that oh you know I know this that passed away, and and people are gonna buy this and say this is very very necessary. To me, I find a lot wrong about the uh, ID because for one. There's going to be a lot of privacy concerns on the vac on the vaccine IDs, and how effective this will be for going on in the future, pri privacy wise. And to me, there is no way. If you want my opinion on this, no way I'll ever take the freaking jab. No way, in hell I won't. And to me, there are certain reasons about this. I think a lot of people will not buy it. In fact, a lot of people, um, especially in the UK, there's been a big protest. I've been watching the big protests like anti-lockdowns, um, protests that's been going on in the UK, 1.3 million people uh, marching while you had the fake stream media saying one thing, saying that, oh, this was just a few hundred thousand. While that is far from the truth, that's... Uh, certainly not true, uh, however, because actually there has been people uh, going against this for good reasons. Obviously, this is a very huge privacy privacy concern. And if you ask me, I don't think this is going to work. Absolutely not. And in a nutshell, um, they're going to end up pushing the vaccine passport more and more right there too. And so continue on on WebMD um, as it goes, which says... As the new COVID-19 pandemic continues, the idea is that with a vaccine passport system in place, companies could fully open for business to anyone who shows proof of vaccination. Uh, countries might uh, uh, resume international travel without requiring quarantines. This would help boost economies while limiting the spread of the disease. So I've looked at it this way. I don't like what this is going on. In fact, there's been um, very good doctors has been reporting about coronaviruses. In fact, the coronavirus hasn't even killed uh, that many people, despite what they're telling you on television. And in fact, I don't believe on taking this because for one, I do care about my privacy. And this is just another lockstep to use these uh, vaccine passports to know where the hell you are and if you've taken your regular shots, whatever, right there too. And to me, it's just very much unbelievable 
how they're they're doing this passport just to strip away uh, people to if you can't if you don't have the ID or the vaccine ID, uh, you cannot travel. I feel, to me that's just awful right there. What is going on? And to me, the world a world health organization. I, I should just put it. There's no accountability. Um, and here in my country, still funding the World Health Organization, which supposedly supposed to do good, and very much so, there has not been any good whatsoever, too. And despite what you hear, and here we are, a year and a half later, we here we are. I can't believe this. What's going on right now? They've are still closed internationally. Uh, there's countries in Europe still uh, still closed for U.S. citizens. Um, however, it's going to be only open to for people that have gotten vaxxed. And for as I've uh, said on a per, more personal level, but never made it publicly, I'm 100% against the vax. I will not take the vax. I do think it is very, very dangerous. People have got hurt from this vaccination, and I will not take it. And the a U.S. health uh, a minister, whoever um, the, his title is, uh, Dr. Uh, Fauci. In fact, there's been big, big senators out that have questioned him about this. And I do applaud uh, Senator Rand Paul for questioning on this, too. And he's ta- he's questioned him like actually several times. And there's actually been a video, very famous one right there, too. And I'll have the link down below. So if you guys are interested in listening to the hearing, it is very um, um, good hearing. I There's been a lot of evidence against Fauci and especially what, what Rand Paul have said that that um, the double mask that he's been using is just f- that what he's been parading and showing for off for. Um, to me, that doesn't. The mass doesn't help a lot. There's been uh pretty much a lot of evidence of being actually a lot of good doctors that are talking about this as well. And um, it's not that I'm a science denier, but however, this right here, I mean, if this virus has killed everyone, then why should anyone go for the vaccine passport? You know, and you know, this is just very, very scummy. I just do not like where this is going especially and now let's just say for the vaccination passport and then people would have to renew on the jabs make sure that the that their test has to be negative at all times and especially with the pcr testing um in fact the pcr testing i think there's been senators or in people have talked about this is that the pcr test testing does um is not doesn't even show those um the numbers accurately because in fact if you uh, a lot of doctors said uh, have said this is that the PCR testing is not a hundred percent correct and even if you are very very good uh your health is fine everything like that too how come would you want to go ahead and um, take out the jab if you are a very very healthy person and that's just a question I'm thinking why would anyone in the right mountain, very healthy, want to take the jab. Well, if you are okay uh, physically and doesn't have the sniffles, you know, right? And if you do have the sniffles and people, if you are sniff, uh, sniffling, then that means then you're just going to have to take it. And because a lot of people are just afraid that... Um, um, that you're just sick or you have coronavirus, you know, and people are just assuming that without even knowing, which is absolutely insane. Look, I'm, I've been very, very good for a whole year and no one has even talked about the flu and pretty much the flu has been defeated. No one has even talked about, um, what has happened to the flu. And even uh, from last year, uh, the flu has already been combated. And then here you are, um, people talking about coronavirus. This coronavirus is probably the worst, worst thing. 
And absolutely, that's not even truth. Uh, this is beyond what I've been hearing about this right here, too. And this is absolute nonsense. And to think that you should take uh, the, a U.S. government doctor like Dr. Fauci as gospel. And this is pretty much how people are taking this. It's just a, a huge cult why would you want to take something that you don't even know what you're actually taking onto your body? Absolutely, Ugh. absolutely um, disgusted by that too. And then, and here people are not even thinking what would do to them too. And let's just say if you could not walk the next day after you take your job within less than twenty four hours, Pfizer, Mandora, um, man, uh, Mandora, or however you say say it, right? Um, in fact, uh, there's been proofs of blood clots, uh, with, um, is, um, AZ with, uh, the AZ jab, uh, which was administered right in the, uh, UK, right? And, and I know in the con in my country, in the United States, they have actually had, they had to stop taking, uh, uh, the AZ shots or a, or what does, what does that stand for AZ? I'm just going to call it the AZ jab, which what I've heard was that um, they stopped am administering it in the United States because it was proven that it was giving a lot of problems to people. And here we are. Uh, we're going to give out these experimental treatments that hasn't been proven and to work with a lot of people, too. And in fact, I know that there are people that are still still around, still healthy uh, after taking it, too. And let's just say if you were to get it, the next jab, whatever, right, for travel, then what happens? What happens then? What happens if you cannot stand up after your second jab? There's a huge, huge problem with that, too. And that's why I never encourage anyone to take it. But if you're willing to take that, that's up to you. That's your choice. Whatever. Your body, your choice. And I've already made my choice in fact. I will not, not take it, ever, ever take it. So that's the bottom line right there too. So yeah. So that's what I'll say about it too. And I know I will definitely get ex pretty much put um, a more extended topic on it because I know it's very long topic and ex there's in length right there. I I know it's a very controversial topic. And I would definitely go into much more in a more lengthier topic, uh, not on this uh, episode, but probably in the next episode, I will talk about more about digital vaccines, the damage it will do to privacy, so on and so forth. So I wanted to go ahead and get into a much lighter topic. So as very many of you that don't know or listening to this, I am going to be doing a birthday stream on May 29th uh, for my 30th birthday. So I'll be doing a Twitch stream coming up right there. So if you guys want to join in for um, tons of gaming, retro um, uh, retro games I'm going to be playing later on that day, it'll, my stream will be a eight-hour stream. So if you guys want to check out my stream, you guys are more than welcome to hang out and um, talk to me chill with me play some multiplayer in fact i'm going to be getting on to apex and a little bit of valorant on my uh birthday so if you guys want to come and join you guys are more more than welcome to hang out if you like so that being said i just want to go ahead and announce that on my podcast so my stream will be up on um saturday 2 p.m eastern standard time so if you guys want to join me on my birthday stream uh i'll be very happy if you guys join me and hang out uh that'll be pretty super so but that said thanks so much for taking a listen to the leon Legree podcast i know um the ending of that subject was a little bit darker but however um that was my issue with digital vaccine ids and how this is all comes down to as well so that being said, I hope you found this inf uh, information useful or entertaining. Why not too? 
I like to hear what everybody has to say. Let me know down in the comments what do you think about digital pa uh, passport IDs or what uh, what other commentary you have to say. Please put a review on your favorite uh, podcast platform of your choice. If it's iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, whatever it is. Love to hear your opinions down below and and a review would be super nice. So that being said, thank you so much for taking a listen. Thanks for listening to Leland Great Podcast and I'm out.